Alright guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to do the front brake and rotor change on a 2009 GMC Canyon. So the brake setup on this vehicle is a little bit different. Um, if you've done brakes before, you could already see just visually that it's different from your typical brake setup. On this car, the brake rotor actually sits behind the wheel hub instead of on sliding on top of it like you would in a regular car. But even though the brake setup is a bit different, it is still just a regular brake change. And I'm going to be showing you guys an in-depth guide on how to change the brakes on this vehicle. So the tools you're going to need to do this job is a socket set just like this. You're going to need a breaker bar, a torque wrench, a metal wire brush, a C-clamp or the brake piston compressor tool. I'll have a picture of how that looks right now. You're going to need a flathead screwdriver. Then you're going to need some medium strength blue thread lock. You're going to need a silicone based brake lubricant, some brake cleaner. And now this came with the brake pad. This is a lubricant that you put on the caliper where the brake pads sit and it helps reduce friction. If your brake pads didn't come with this, you're going to want to buy a copper based anti-seize and it'll do the same exact job as this. And yes, obviously you're going to want the brake pads and rotors that fit your vehicle. Make sure that the brake pads come with this hardware here. These are the um, anti rattle clips. Um, you need to replace these as you do your brake job, so make sure that it comes with it. And once you have all that, you're just going to need something to lift up your car, such as a jack and jack stand. So there are six things that we're going to do to complete this brake job. So we're going to start off by lifting up the car. Then once the car is lifted up, we're going to take off the caliper, then take out the brake pads, take out the wheel hub, change the brake rotor, and then reinstall everything. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is lift up the vehicle. But before we do that, we're going to crack open all of these lug nuts because if we try to do it while the car is lifted, this wheel is just going to keep spinning. So you just want to take your breaker bar and loosen up all six bolts. Now with all six bolts loose, there's one more thing we're going to do before we lift it. And that's to make sure that the car is in park and we're going to chalk the rear tires. So since we're lifting up the front left of the car, what we're going to do is we're going to chalk the rear right tire, just like that. So with the lug nuts cracked, the rear tire is chalked off and the car is in park, we can now go ahead and lift up our car. So you're going to want to take your jack and put it on one of your lifting points. If you can't find where to lift your car from, just check your owner's manual under the, under the spare tire section and it'll show you pictures on where to safely lift up your car so you don't damage anything. So once your car is lifted up, you're going to want to secure it with a jack stand. Once you have it in place, just slowly let down the vehicle. And now that our car is secured on the jack stand, what we're going to do is give the car a good shake to make sure that it's really supported. And there you go. So now we know the car won't come off the jack. So with the car lifted, you can now go ahead and take off your wheel. So now with the wheel off and we have access to our wheel assembly here, the first thing we're going to do is take off this speed sensor right here. So you're just going to follow this wire down and in behind here, you're going to see this bolt right here and this holds the speed sensor in. So we're going to loosen this and take it out. So you just want to take an eight millimeter socket. Now with the bolt out the speed sensor, all you got to do is just pull it out of its bracket. And we're gonna set this somewhere where it won't be in our way. So I'm just gonna tuck it right back here. So now that we have the speed sensor out, the next thing that we're gonna do is take out our caliper. So our caliper is held in by two bolts. There's one on top right here, and there's an, ident an identical one on the bottom. But those bolts are in the back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the wheel so that we can easily get access to the back of the caliper. So with our wheel hub turned, we can now get to the back a lot easier. So now you just want to take your breaker bar and loosen up those two bolts. There's one. And there's two. So just take the bolts out. And now the whole caliper should just slide out with little effort. Just like that. So now what you, what you want to do is put the caliper on top of something or hang it up on top of here or with a bungee cord on your suspension. And what we want to do is we want to keep the stress, keep the weight of the caliper off this line because this line will break. So with our caliper removed, we can now get to the brake pads 
and these brake pads you should be able to just take them out by hand and if they're a little stuck kind of like mine you just want to take a flathead screwdriver to help you pry it out just like that so now that we have our brake pads out the next step is to take off these six bolts right on the front here so these, these are the bolts that hold the rotor to the uh, hub assembly now if we try to loosen it just like this you can see the whole hub is just going to spin and you won't be able to get enough tension to take that bolt off so a little trick is to take your flathead screwdriver and with these little vents that are in the side of the rotor you just want to put your flathead right in there and as we go to loosen this the flathead is going to get wedged up against our caliper bracket and it's going to give us enough tension so we could take these bolts off so with those bolts loosened just take out your screwdriver and leave those bolts in there we're going to take them off once we get the caliper bracket off so to take it off there are two bolts holding it in which is this bolt right here and this bolt right down here these two bolts you take out and the caliper bracket will just slide off so again you just want to take your breaker bar and you just want to loosen these two bolts now these do get torqued down to 129 foot pounds so it's going to be really hard to get these off so after you take those two bolts out like that this will just come right out with it so now with our whole caliper assembly out of the way we could go ahead and take out the hub so the hub is held by four bolts. So the four bolts are right back here. We got one, two, three, and four. These four bolts need to come out so we could take the whole hub out. Now, if you have the four by four option for this car, on the front here, right in the center, you're gonna have an axle nut and you're gonna have to take that off as well. And you just wanna take your breaker bar and loosen these up. So with those four bolts out, we can now slide out the wheel hub. And so the hub is rust welded to the bracket, so we're going to have to use a rubber mallet to hit the back of the rotor to help us take this off. So now we want to hit the back of the rotor right here with this mallet while we're turning this so that we can knock it loose. So the rubber mallet isn't working, so I'm going to be switching to a regular hammer. And since we're changing these rotors anyway, we don't need to worry about damaging them. And so this was really, really rusted on there. So you can see on the back how many times that I had to hit that rotor. Look at that to get it off. That's crazy. So now with the wheel hub removed, we could go ahead and take out these six bolts. So I'm actually gonna use my breaker bar here just so I could take out the bolts a little easier because it's hard to get my fingers in there. So once the six bolts are out, you'll be able to slide the hub right out, but it's kind of rusted together. So I'm gonna give it a light tap with a hammer. And there you go. So now the hub and the rotor are separate. So since we have everything off, this is actually a good time to clean up all the rust that built up over on these parts. So we want to give it a nice clean just so that when we put everything back together, there's a nice flat surface for everything to get mounted together nicely. So you just want to take your metal wire brush and scrape everything down. And once you got all your areas, hit it with some brake cleaner and wipe it off. So you want to do this for your wheel hub and your wheel hub bracket. You want to focus on areas where two parts are going to be touching so that they have a nice flat surface to work with. So now with everything all cleaned up, we could go ahead and install our new rotor. So just place your new rotor on your surface, slide in your wheel hub, then you want to look from above and you want to line up the holes, just like that. And with your holes lined up, you want to take your bolt and you want to apply some blue thread lock. You want to apply just a little to the bolts right here and install it into your rotor. Do the same thing for all six bolts. 
So now that we have all six bolts in and our hub and our rotor are now one piece again, we can go ahead and install everything back on the car. So the first thing that needs to go on is our brake shield. This is kind of tough to get in place as we're trying to put the rotor on. So just a little trick, put the bolts through first, just like that, so that we can now use them to guide the brake shield. So now with the brake shield held in place with our bolts, we could go and install the hub. So the next thing that we have to do is line these four bolts up with the bolt holes that are on the back of our hub assembly. So this might get a little bit tricky and it might get a little tough to put in. So you wanna get it in a little bit of the way and use a rubber mallet to hit it in the rest of the way. Use very light taps. Do not use a metal hammer because I showed you guys earlier what a metal hammer could do to a rotor. So now with our hub in place, we want to take out the bolts, put some thread lock on this again, and reinstall them. So again, just put a little bit of medium strength thread lock on it, just like that. Then take your ratchet and tighten them down nice and tight. So then we want to take our torque wrench and set it to 92 foot pounds and torque down those four bolts on the back. Make sure you tighten them down in a crisscross pattern so that the hub sits evenly. All right, good. So now we have the whole hub assembly installed and the next thing is to wipe down this rotor and make it nice and clean. During packaging, they put an oil on the shiny part of the rotors right here to keep it from rusting. And we need to take that off with some paper towel and some brake clean or else those oils on the rotor can cause us to have no brakes. So just spray some onto the paper towel, put it on the rotor and now rotate the rotor as you clean it. So you can see all the dirt that came off, a lot of it from my gloves because it's dirty, but some of these on here is the oils that are coming off of the rotor. And now don't forget to do the same with the back. So now with our hub installed, our brake rotor clean, we can now go ahead and torque down these six bolts. But if you remember, this wheel is just going to keep spinning as we torque them down. So we need to install the caliper bracket before we continue. So now since we have the caliper off, this is a good time to clean it as well. So get it nice and clean, just like that. So now you want to slide this caliper bracket back over and reinstall the two bolts that hold it down. Make sure you put some thread lock on these as well. And these two bolts get torqued down to 129 foot-pounds. So with our caliper bracket installed, we can now go and torque down these six bolts on the front here. So don't forget to put your screwdriver into the vent on the rotor just like this. And these guys get torqued down to 81 foot-pounds. So when you're torquing these down, make sure you go in a star pattern, just like how you would if you were doing the lug nuts on this vehicle. So once those are torqued down, remove your screwdriver, and now we can install all of our brake hardware. So the first thing that we're going to install are the new brake clips, and all of these clips are the same, so don't worry about which one's which. So the clips for this vehicle sit in just like this, so you want to push them in and push down until they click. Once they click, they're in, give it a little wiggle, make sure it's in there nice, and you're good to go. Do the same thing with the top, and now we're ready to install our brake pads. But before we do that, we need to lubricate our brake hardware with the grease that came with our brake pads. If you didn't get a grease with your brake pads, then you would want to use a copper-based anti-seize, and it'll do the same job as this. But first, I'm going to go change my gloves. So now that I got a pair of disposable gloves on, what you want to do is just take a little bit of the grease, put it on your finger, and now you want to put it in all the places where your brake pads are touching. And then do the same for the top. So the next place where you're going to want to put some of this grease are on the ends of the pads right here and on the back. So now that you greased up your brake pads, what you want to do is change your gloves because you don't want to get any of this stuff on your rotors or on the face of your brake pad. So now you want to take your brake pads, avoid touching any of the greasy parts, and it should just slide right in.
Then install the other side. And there you go. Now you have both brake pads properly installed. So with our brake pads in, we can now install our caliper, but we need to compress these pistons on here first. And just to give you an idea, look how much thicker our new brake pad is. So like I just said, the pistons are gonna come out to replace all the material that got lost from our new brake pads. So just so you guys know, you can see on the pads, these are the old pads, but you can see it had a little tab on it just like this. This is actually the brake wear indicator. So as our brake pads get smaller, it'll line up with this tab and this tab will actually scrape against our rotor and it will make a grinding noise. And since it's making that grinding noise, that's when you know to change your brakes. So to compress these pistons, I'm gonna be using a C-clamp. Now they make a tool for this job specifically and I'll have a picture of it up on the screen. So you can see my C-clip is all the way extended and it hardly fits over this. So what you wanna do is put your old brake pad up against the pistons, but since my C-clip is small, I gotta compress one piston, then the other, then I'll have enough room to compress both of them. So you just wanna put it over the pistons just like this and keep turning. Now this should go in very smoothly and once you start feeling resistance, you're gonna know that you're at the end. So you can see that one piston is compressed and the other one's still extended. So just do the same thing on the other side. And now you can see when I compress this right one, the left one started to come back out. So now I'm gonna grab my old brake pad and use it to compress both pistons at the same time. So now we can install our caliper again, but first there are these little caliper guide pins on the back here. So if you push this piece of rubber back, you're gonna be able to slide out this metal, almost like a bolt. And that's really hard to get out. But once it's out, get all the old grease off. Take your silicone based brake lubricant and cover this guide pin with it. So just put on a bunch just like that and spread it all around so it covers the whole guide pin. So once it's all nice and greased up, just slide it back in. Then you're gonna wanna do the same thing for the top one. Clean it off, but once it's all nice and lubricated, again, just slide it back in. So with the guide pins lubricated, we can now reinstall our caliper. So just take your caliper and wiggle it in there until it's lined up. So once it's lined up, take the bolts, add some thread lock onto these as well, and go ahead and reinstall them. And once you have your two caliper bolts in, they get torqued down to 29 foot-pounds. So now we have everything back on. We bolted the hub back in place, our bracket is torqued down, all of our brake hardware is lubricated, our bolts holding the rotor are torqued down, and we have our caliper installed so everything is looking good. Now don't forget about the speed sensor. So now we could go ahead and put the wheel back on. And now you just want to tighten them down as much as you can. Once the wheel is on, just lower the car until the wheel touches the ground. Don't let it down all the way, still have the jack under the car holding most of the weight. And the lug nuts get torqued down to 108 foot-pounds of torque. Once the wheels are torqued, you can let it down all the way. And don't forget to remove the wheel chocks. But there you have it, a very detailed video on how to change your brakes on a 2009 GMC Canyon. Well, I at least try to make it as detailed as possible. I try to cover everything that I know so that you guys don't have any questions after watching this video. And that includes all of the torque specs and all of the little tips and tricks that I showed you guys. But thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions on this brake change, just leave a comment below. I always reply the same day, so you won't be waiting long at all. You can also message me on Instagram as well for any questions you guys have. And if you guys are wondering where I got any of the tools, down below are going to be the links to everything that I've used. So if you want to know where to get something, you have it there. So check out those tools. Try your own brake change at home. Let me know how it goes in the comments. And I'll see you guys in the next video.